our council meeting. I don't, I'm holding. Are we ready? Okay. Um, we really are truly grateful for the public's patience um, and for understanding the times that we are in and sort of what we I have to do here to make sure that we are following our policies and keeping people safe and healthy. We are happy to return to these hybrid meetings because it is lovely to see everyone and to be in a room together as much as we possibly can. Um, but as you saw, it does create a little bit of chaos at times. And again, I appreciate people's patience and understanding with us. We do ask that everyone keep their as much uh, that keep their face coverings on. There is a mandate here in the building, and um, unless you're speaking, and then we'd ask that you take it off for the record, and so it's easier to hear people. At this point, um, I'd like for uh, everyone to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you are joining us for the public comment opportunities we have later on the agenda, we are accepting your comments in person and also through WebEx. And for those whose only option is to call in, staff will be monitoring a separate telephone line. Before we begin, I want to mention and review our rules of decorum. These are guidelines that the City Council has always had in place to help our meetings progress in an orderly, civil, efficient way. These rules of decorum help us to move through the agenda and give everyone the opportunity to voice their opinions without feeling intimidated. In order to achieve this, our rules of decorum begin from the moment you arrive here or in our virtual meeting. We respect all points of view and we welcome new insights. While giving your comments, please be respectful. Avoid yelling, profanity, or making racial slurs, obscene, or defamatory remarks. If you use profanity during your comment, if you're online, you will be muted. If you're here, you will be asked to stop. And if any of the comments reach a level of disrespect, you will forfeit your opportunity to address the council tonight. If you feel you need to use profanity to express your point, you're more than welcome to email council members or call our comment line. In addition, our staff will request for your name during the WebEx registration or um, on a comment card if you're in person. To limit disruption, your name cannot include a message or violate our rules of decorum. If your name doesn't meet this requirement, then our staff will make contact with you to gather that information from you. Isaac Canador from our staff is helping to mod moderate the WebEx portion of our meeting and will be messaging with attendees to coordinate on any questions with your registration. Staff is handling a number of tasks, so I ask that you please limit messages to technical issues and minimal changes. For in-person attendees, please raise your hand and a staff person will respond to help. Um, we have staff people outside, we have staff people in here, we have staff people in the overflow room, we have a lot of staff people. So please raise your hand and we will get to you as soon as we possibly can. We're keeping our eyes open. Um, if you don't get to finish your comment or don't want to have your comment publicly, you don't want to voice your comment out loud, you can always mail us to PO Box 145476, Salt Lake City, Utah 84114. Email us at council.comments at slcgov.com or call us at 801-535-7654. This bring up, brings us to item A4, where the council will approve the work session meetings of Tuesday, July 20th, 2021. I will look for a motion. So <laughs> moved. Second. I have a motion by council member Wharton and a second by council member Dugan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Next, I am going to take a moment to recognize some of our council colleagues whose terms are coming to an end. First, I would like to mention, I would like to turn to Dennis Ferris. Councilmember Ferris 
um, joined us earlier this year. Was that this year? <laughs> Everything seems to be a blur, but joined us earlier this year. And Dennis's life sort of um, embraces and, and is embodied by the act of service. Following in his father's footsteps by enlisting in the U.S. Air Force during the first Gulf War, becoming a council member, to becoming a council member, and always being active within your community. You carry a deep appreciation for those willing to serve the public, and, and at your core, service defines you. Um, I believe that you, in your short period of time, you have accomplished quite a bit for our council. Joined, um, you obviously joined our council family in a very busy time, uh, which you needed, <laughs> you jumped in feet first, head first, and ru while running. So thank you for that. You assisted with the completion of the city's overall budget, which included, and you advocated for very well, for a number of projects on the west side. You've also advocated for several projects in D2 uh, with our CIP funding, and we're integral in opening the Three Creeks Park and ensuring the success of the completion. And of course, you continue to be active within your own community, meeting with constituents, having community groups, continuing the community groups over on North Temple, and really getting to know and understand people's issues. I think that um, you also certainly do that with your job at the VOA and have seen you out uh, numerous times as we have done our, um, what are our community projects with the, from kayak court to community outreach projects. It's been fun to get to know you in that area as well and see, be able to work hand in hand with you there. Um, and, you know, I mean, to be fair, we've had our fair, fair share of arguments and disagreements, but that I appreciate. You always have a, a good way of presenting your point, allowing me to present mine, and even if we disagree, come to the end of the conversation, smiling and knowing that we're gonna be good co-workers. So thank you for that. Um, I want to, before we present your gift, I'd like to turn it over to any other council members for any words that you'd like to say to Dennis. Not to put anybody on the spot, but. So, um, council member Ferris, I, oh. Councilmember Ferris, I uh, also just want to say in addition to those and, and some of the areas where there was disagreement on the council, but you, um, in the short time that you were here, definitely left your mark on the Parks and Public Lands Department, um, advocating for that to be raised to the department level. Um, and um, I know that um, the work that we were able to accomplish together um, at the North Temple meetings um, and, and being there consistently to update that community um, of residents and business owners. And I hope that um, I'll still continue to see you there from time to time. And um, uh, so just wanted to add those things and say that uh, I really appreciate your service. Um, I really respect your desire to, uh, to keep being a community leader, whether that's on the council, in your job, um, in your personal life, uh, or just the great work that you and your family do for the community. So thank you so much, and um, it's been great um, having you, gaining you as a council member and as a friend. Go ahead, Victoria. As a West Sider, we experienced some significant upheaval this year, and I want to thank you for stepping in on our behalf when we needed someone to just anchor us and be stable and to do the hard work. And I don't, for the life of me, I will never figure out how you managed budget season, launching a campaign, and just learning all of the nonsense that I'm learning right now. Just what I'm doing is insane, and at least I don't have to campaign. So thank you for doing it. I know like it was a sacrifice. Catherine, thank you for sacrificing what you sacrificed with your family so that he could. Thank you for putting yourself out there and for being a source of hope for, for us Westsiders. I appreciate you. Dennis, great conversations. Love working with you. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, getting to know you. 
I'll see you on the slopes. No, no big air. And I'll see you on the bike trails. Okay? All right. Great working for you. Happy holidays. Uh, I wasn't prepared for this, but... <laughs> Councilman Ferris, thank you so much for your service to District 2 and to the city. Uh, when I learned of uh, Councilmember Johnston's uh, leaving the council, I, you, you were one of the first people that came to mind, maybe because you're one of the few people in District 2 that I know. But uh, my work with you as a council member representing a district that hosts a homeless resource center and the work that you're doing in that community with, and with the service providers has always been impressive to me. And your sort of straight, no-nonsense way of communicating has been something that um, I'm sure that I will continue to uh, lean on you for advice in, in many areas within the city as we uh, move forward. So thank you so much for your service and your time. Thank you. Now, Dennis, this gift was chosen for you because of the great outdoors. And um, we know that you will be headed out to play outside. And we understand that you um, were an independent sales rep selling wholesale bicycle equipment for 15 years of your career. So it is with um, our hope that you go out and enjoy the nature and the, beauty of, and the beauty of Salt Lake City and have these paneer bags as a reminder of your service to Salt Lake City and how much West Side means to you. Thank you. The time is yours. Um. I tend to be a, a very no-nonsense communicator. Um, <laughs> except for when I get emotional. So I'm going to keep it short and sweet here. Um, just <sighs> thank you very much to everyone here for giving me the opportunity to be here um, with to have been chosen by this council um, to replace Andrew Johnston when he left um, is has absolutely been one of the greatest honors of my life and I really appreciate it um, and I fantastically appreciate being able to have worked with each of you council members in your time here. Um, I feel like this council in particular was one of one of the best working councils that I've seen in my years of working in the community. So I just was extremely honored to have been chosen to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. So, this one, now I'm turning to the recognition of Mr. James Rogers for his service as council member for, uh, for District 1 from January 2014 to October of 2021. I hate you for this right now. Um, I think that everyone in this room and every one of your constituents and every one of our staff and every one of the council members and probably quite a few people in the admin's office, certainly a number of people throughout this building have a story to tell about you, about your hard work, your dedication, the amount of care that you have for the, these people and this city, the way that you will have someone's back no matter what, your stubbornness, and of course the way you make us laugh 
when I was first elected, I came in to this circus and thought, yeah, I don't think James and I are ever going to be friends. And I very distinctly remember the day that I put you on my bestie list. And we were in a small group meeting, and I was very new. And there was somebody in the meeting who I would say had little respect for the other people in that meeting. And as I was trying to get a point across this other person, um, it was not very nice. And I, I sort of just sat there and kind of came back and was like, okay, I guess I don't know what to do. And James almost stood up literally, but looked at this person and said, you don't disrespect anyone around me like that. And I thought, holy cow, this guy has my back and he cares so deeply and so genuinely that he's not going to let anyone that he cares about be hurt. And it is just who you are. It is ingrained in you. And it showed in everything you did as a council person. You made tough decisions. Had to be on the Inland Port Board. I'm, I'm sorry, but... Oof. But you never stopped caring. And you never stopped working with that care behind you at all times. I am lucky to call you my friend and my mentor and one of the best damn council members I've had the opportunity to work with. And I'm pretty sure staff would agree with me on that. James, thank you so much for your service. I've missed you and will, but I'm happy for you and where you're at and the amount of care and love that you get to spend showering on your family and not have to worry about us. Thank you, Jamesy. Council members, I'll turn the time over to you. Um, so when we had the windstorm uh, in 2020, that was uh, after the earthquake, and after the pandemic had started, um, and after a very uh, active, uh, eventful summer, um, when we had that windstorm and there were all of these trees that were downed all over the city and we were on this group text with the council and all of us texting each other saying, you know, this is what's happening in my neighborhood, this is what, these are the streets that are blocked here, these are the streets that are blocked there. Um, James is sending pictures of himself already out there chopping up, like um, cutting up the trees, clearing paths with his neighbors, like while we were still trying to figure out what even had happened, uh, James was already on the scene and had already like cleared several felled trees and was, you know, ready to, to keep going for the whole rest of the day and I'm sure he did. Um, and that is the kind of leadership that, that James, that you exemplify is you are a doer and uh, you can't wait to get out there and, and jump in and, um, you know, start doing the real work. And that in addition to, and I, I've said this before, like I swear, James, you could just describe somebody in James's district and he would be able to name who that person was or describe what their issues were and he'd be able to say, oh, you know, that's so-and-so that, that, that lives on American Beauty and they, it, it, it was incredible. Um, and to know your, um, the people of your district like that and to uh, be out there doing the kind of work that you do, um, not even without being asked, but before anybody even thinks of the question to ask, you're already out there doing it. And that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. I learned a lot from you because of that. Even though I think, 
you know, sometimes you and I couldn't be further apart on different issues, but I, uh, I will always have, uh, that will always stick out in my mind for me, um, and will always inspire me to try to be, um, more of a leader like that, um, to the people that I'm representing and aspire to have that, um, to have that, to be able to do that same thing. So I want you to know that, that that's something that I take from my experience of having the pleasure to work with you. And um, it's something that is going to help shape me and I, I think what has shaped other people on this council moving forward. So thank you so much for that example and um, so much respect to you and I wish you all the best. And of course, you know, going forward, you come to me if there's anything that you need, anything I can do to help. Thank you. Your rest is well earned. You stood in some intense crosshairs for our community for so long. And you did it without posting on social media and accepting praise for it. And I know that I sit here representing our home now because of some of the sacrifices you made and some of the tough decisions you made. And so not as a council member, as your constituent, thank you. I know what you did. I'm learning more what you did every day. Um, and I hope you don't think you're escaping me, number one, because I'm your tenant, but also number two, because um, I'm going to haunt your text messages and can get you to do all of the things I've asked you and a few more. So thank you so much, James. For on behalf of District One, thank you for what you've done for us. Well, James, you and I first talked on the subway or the Metro in Washington, D.C. And uh, no one else knows this, but he's the one who gave Darren and I COVID. <laughs> I think it was on that train ride. He, he escaped it all because he had superpowers. No, uh, all kidding aside, that, that was a, you know, it was a great time to, you know, you in introduced me to the council at that time. We, we were able to meet at that time. And it was a nice uh, gesture that we were able to, to bond and, and uh, talk to each other at a, at a uh, you know, at a, at a basic level. But I, and, I, and I love that conversation. And I always look back at that conversation because it allowed us to have a, a, a friendship that we then spent 20 months on Zoom calls. Uh, and we couldn't develop any further. But it was uh, always loved your uh, insight on different issues, your stance on different issues, though we didn't always agree with them were always strong and they were always well thought out and they always had your district in mind, your district in mind and also the city in mind. And you always were able to point out things that were in the future and not just things that had to be dealt with in, in, the, in the present. And I, I say that in the terms of the budget. You're always like, hey, we need to think about this going forward. So I appreciate your, uh, your wisdom and your uh, and your uh, discussions, frank discussions one-on-one. -on -one. So thank you very much for your service and uh, happy holidays. Um, council Member Rogers, thank you for the time that we were able to share on the council. I, uh, I think the thing that I'll always remember about you is your ability to balance doing the serious work of the council and having a good time and laughing. Um, and the, the memory that I have is when we were sitting in your office learning about a project and we all got a text on our phone and uh, it was something that was surprising and you were able to just look at me and laugh and then move right back into the important meeting that we were having and, and I think that's something that um, I will always remember because I think that that's, not, that's something that you were able to do throughout the entire time that I worked with you on the council is to be able to balance having a good time and doing the serious work and, and I'm sure that you'll be able to carry that balance forward in your life as you move forward, so thanks. I'm still going to try and keep it short. James, you've pretty much always been there for me for on the west side um, in m most of my years trying to improve our neighborhood as well. So I just thank you very much for always being there and ready to answer my call and um, help us all work together to make things better for everybody. I really appreciate it, buddy. Thanks. Jamesy, I stopped crying for a minute. 
Our gift is made from a Siberian elm that grew for decades in Pioneer Park. Several years ago, this tree was removed from the park and urban forestry milled the boards. Siberian elms can be found in city parks and neighborhoods throughout the city, but have not been planted in the city for many decades, as it is typically a planted species, but ironically grows fairly well here in our city. It is drought tolerant and handles our summer heat well. We also learned it is a tree that is not harvested and processed into lumber and stockyard, stocked at lumber yards, meaning it is incredibly rare. Tony Gliat, city's urban forester, was instrumental in helping us to provide the Siberian elm to Chris Gleason, a local woodworker, who made this gift for you. Chris knows about the beauty of the west side because he has lived in your district for years. Chris shared in his 25 years of woodworking, he has never worked with this type of wood before and told us it was a delightful experience. We present this gift to you as a subtle reminder of the impressive ways that you creatively grew and adapted to any type of situation. You have proved that with your service and advocacy in District 1, this gift also, no doubt, represents you, how rare you are, your uniqueness as an individual. Hopefully this will serve as a reminder for you of how much you are adored in Salt Lake City and the work that you've done for District 1. Love you, Jamesy. Are you going to say something? <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. Well, you know me. I don't have much to say. Unless it deals with ranked choice voting or, <laughs> or some other stuff. I'm going to hope I can take my mask off. Uh, this is really cool. Can I just say that? Like, I just had a little bit of flashback of the past eight years and talking about all these highlights that connect the west side with the Jordan River Trail. and. Dennis started something off, I didn't think I was going to cry because I've had two and a half months off and it's been great. <laughs> it's been great, let me repeat that. Um, but yeah, I like seeing the state prison on there and the inland port, thank you state of Utah. Um, <laughs> I've had a good time on that board, that's for sure. Um, good people for sure. Um, I just. I just uh, I know staff is cringing because they know I've said some really inappropriate things in meetings and sometimes in open meetings too. And <laughs> um, <laughs> is my mic on? Yes. I see. So look at Cindy. She's rubbing her forehead. She doesn't know what to do. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, um, I don't think anyone, and I've said this before, and I think it still holds true even after two months, has heard more public comment than I have. And uh, I don't, that's not something I'm gloating about or I'm proud of, but it was just something that we have to do, whether you like it or not. And I was telling this to some council members last week when we were having our photos taken that there are five people in your district that are always going to cause you trouble. And that's because if you don't ever agree with them, you're dead to them. And that's not how this works. It works that you represent everybody. And uh, I feel like I've tried to do that. I've had people upset with me, even though I feel like I spoke the truth. Uh, I might be wrong, but I doubt it, in the words of Charles Barkley. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I feel like when you start talking about all these things that, you know, I was able to accomplish, it wasn't me. Like, Chris asked what our superpower is when he was the chair. My superpower were all these people that were here and the people that walked out. Um, that's my superpower, and that's who I go to when I have questions, and it's because it's people I can rely on. and. Uh, that's transferred into here in this building with people who are my family and that starts with council staff and I'm gonna try and name them all I know I'm gonna leave somebody out and not make anybody feel bad but Linda who I call Angela um, it's a little little secret there for that but we'll keep that there um, Jan Aramaki and Amanda in the in that office with Lehua um, I'm gonna go into the 
This is pretty good. It's off the cuff, right? Okay. So um, you're going to have to help me out. Austin and uh, Sam and Brian and my boy Vili, appreciative of him and all the liaisons that worked with me, starting with Libby, who really educated me and taught me really what, how the city was run. And then, you know, just looking at through the time, those, there was an administration that I'd like to take a mulligan on, but I couldn't. So there was four years there that I am grateful to have Priscilla, who has always had my back, uh, along with uh, Amber. Um, and then moving into the front office, we have Robin Hogan and Tracy Fletcher, who are amazing at hurting all of you cats, because I'm no longer a cat. Um, and going into the back office with Russell Weeks, who is one of the most brilliant individuals I've ever met, um, who helped me understand the taxi cab issue where I was completely off base on. So uh, I'm apologizing to you, Russell, eight years later, so thank you. Um, uh, to Allison Rowland and Kira, who's no longer here, uh, but I'm going to move into the big three who helped me out probably the most, and that's Lehua Weaver and Jennifer Bruno and Nick Tarbett, who during the most downtrodden time I had on the council were there to support me and lift me up through some of the hardest times in the inland port. Uh, but going into the head of Cindy Gus Jensen, I don't know how you do it, how you're able to do what you've done, and keeping the council moving and keeping the city going on. Um, I'm extremely grateful to all of you. Uh, but my predecessor, Carlton Christensen, who was here for 16 years, the West Side in District 1 had 24 years of representation by two people, where District 2 in the past 24 years now has five. So. There is something to be said about a senior council uh, where this is probably the youngest council that's ever been, right? And he gave me some words of wisdom that I carried through my entire term, and that was that seat that you're sitting in isn't yours. It's the, it's the people's seat. And when you're gone, somebody else is going to fill it. So don't let it go to your head. And I tried to never let that happen. Um, there's so much more I want to say. Uh, former council members, I'm going to go through the list. Um, District 2, Kyle Amalfa, Andrew Johnston, Dennis Ferris. Uh, District 3, Stan Penfold, Chris Wharton. District 4, uh, Luke Garrett, Derek Kitchen, uh, Alan Voldemoros. District 5, um, there's only one until Darren, who I have to give more gratitude to than anybody who's changed my life forever which is the best administration that I have ever worked with, hands down, is our current mayor, Aaron Mendenhall. Um, District 6, Charlie Luke, Dan Dugan. Uh, District 7 uh, is Lisa uh, Adams and Amy Fowler. And Amy, you are by far the best council member I have ever worked with. Uh, bar none, I can't believe it's only been four years. It seems like 12. But that's the type of person you are that you're dedicated to the end, and I am extremely grateful for that. But none of this would have ever happened had I not had the family backing that I did, uh, the support from a partner who would go through hell and high water for me to make sure that I was able to accomplish everything that I could, who picked up the, the brunt of everything that was going on at work and had my back when things were bad and, you know, give me words of advice. And um, I'm... I'm an emotional guy. You might not believe it, but I am. I was raised by some wonderful women, and that's why uh, I will always commend women who run for office or are in power. Uh, specifically, you know, I've got five sisters. Two are, you know, my biological sisters, but then I've got three that have been there uh, to support me, too, in some tough times. So I'm just extremely grateful, and um, I'll just leave you with that. So one thing I want to say is that high school James did come out way too often, and I have to like backtrack a lot and make everybody understand that my faith is my number one priority in my life, and if I ever made it not that priority and people thought that, I need to apologize for that because it is the number one thing in my life. So thank you.
motion all day today. Um, at this point, I would like to turn the time over to Police Chief Mike Brown for a presentation to our outgoing council members, James Rogers and Dennis Ferris. Chief. Thank you, Madam Chair and Council. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening. On October 3rd, 1847, the forefathers of this city put together a city council. And the city council has served this community for 174 years. On March 10th of 1851, then Governor Young, I think the first mayor, commissioned the city council to put together a police department. On March 10th of 1851, we hired 14 officers and we paid them 25 cents an hour. <laughs> Council, thank you for the raises over the years. Thank you for what you've done this year as well. But during those years uh, in law enforcement, one of the first tools that was carried on the streets of Salt Lake City was a baton. It's, it it, it it's, uh, goes by many names, uh, a baton, a nightstick, a billy club, a lathi, a kosh, a truncheon, um, but really it symbolizes the authority and office that an officer care, that, that has. These batons that we present, pre present tonight were turned from an exact baton that was carried upon the streets of Salt Lake City in the early 1850s. We put it on a lathe, we turned them out of hickory, usually hickory, because it's strong. And I'd like to present these to Councilmember Rogers, Councilmember Ferris, and we kind of missed Council Member Johnston when he left, so we have one for him as well. Um, but please let this be a gift uh, that really represents the strength of your service, that represents how you served the community of the Salt Lake City and how seriously you took your oath and your authority. Um, council Member Ferris, thank you. Um, I've known you for many, many years. Your service here on the council is much appreciated and, I'll, and I'm sure we'll work very closely together in the future. Councilmember Rogers, I have to tell you, James, one of the first calls I got from, uh, from uh, as a new chief was from Councilmember Rogers, and he said, hey, this is where I live, pick me up at 8 o'clock. I was like, oh, boy. So <laughs> I, I go pick up James and, and Councilmember Rogers, and we drive through his district, and we talk for two or three hours about the issues and concerns. James, the one thing I've always appreciated about you is you come through the front door. Uh, you do. If there's an issue or a concern, you speak direct, you speak to it. We've had many conversations. And Council Member Rogers, in a very difficult time, you stood up and used your voice in support of law enforcement, and we thank you. And Council Member Johnson, thank you uh, as well. Many years of service, we've been friends for a long time, and, and I appreciate all that you've done for law enforcement. So to the three of you from the Salt Lake City Police Department, Thank you very, very much for your service, and we wish the very best in your life's next endeavor. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, I am now apparently turning the time over to Council Vice Chair Chris Wharton. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Madam Chair, um, so uh, this is for Amy's uh, service as the chair of the council um, for 2021. Um, while in addition to your regular duties representing District 7 um, in a particularly difficult year, I know. Um, since being elected in 2017, you've dedicated your time on the council to fund services to improve homeless issues, public transit, and to create low-income housing. Amy, your motto from day one has been, together we can be the change. Under your leadership for 2021, as a council, a community, and as a city, we have been that change. Under your guidance, the council worked to pass the 2021-2022 fiscal year budget, which uh, concentrates on essential services such as road repair, public safety, housing, support for the community to recover from COVID-19 um, from, that we're still dealing with over the last 16 months, and citywide equity issues. Th 
The new budget also put federal assistance to lasting use. It approved the city's annual capital improvement program or CIP projects. 47 projects were funded ranging from targeted traffic calming efforts to a community garden and many, many more. We also voted to change uh, the 2021 city elections to ranked choice voting without a primary. Salt Lake City's first ranked choice election, you helped oversee that. Um, it provided a system where voters could use their ballot to not only vote for their preferred candidate, but also indicate their backup choices. We adopted joint resolutions with the mayor declaring racism a public health crisis with support from both the Commission on Racial Equity and Policing and the Human Rights Commission, recognizing June 19th as Juneteenth Freedom Day in Salt Lake City, the, the first, first time we officially recognized that. Um, for its culturally important role in the United States and in our city. Recognizing November 20th as Transgender Day of Remembrance and December 1st as World AIDS Day. You helped uh, budget uses for the Federal American Rescue Plan Act or ARPA funding with the goal of balancing city needs to recover from the pandemic with transformative programs throughout the city, laying the groundwork for success in the years ahead by approving budgets that fully supported the capital city's rebound. You helped navigate the council through another year of remote meetings, which I know what that's like. <laughs> um, uh, another year of remote meetings, but you did so efficiently and with your signature cheerfulness. Um, Amy, you have always shown courage and leadership uh, in partnership with the administration in difficult times, such as reinvigorating uh, capital projects, strengthening public services, and investing federal assistance in a way that puts Salt Lake City on track for recovery from the events of an earthquake, hurricane, windstorm, and global pandemic. You have, as you always do, led with your heart in bringing meaningful and thoughtful action in recognizing those in our community that were long overlooked. So uh, we're presenting you with this gift. <laughs> it's under there. <laughs> presenting you with this gift. Uh, I know your passion for Fairmont Park is one of your favorite places in the district. So, um, this it also remains one of the city's treasured open spaces because of your efforts to advance and secure funding for capital and programming improvements. This gift was created by Chris Gleason from the same Siberian elm that James's gift is from. Um, and as, uh, as you read earlier, Tony Gliot, our city's urban forester, says that one of the, um, the one place to spy a row of mature Siberian elms in um, is in Fairmont Park um, on the west of the property, easily visible from 9th East. We thought that this would be a fitting frame for one of Lori Bray's photos capturing the beauty of Fairmont Park, so you may always take a piece of it with you. May you find a great place to hang this as a reminder of your strong leadership and your ability to bring people together. We hope that this gift brings you peace, happiness, and solace for many years. Thank you so much, Chris, and um, to everyone here. Um, it has certainly been a pleasure to be this year's chairperson. Um, even during some of the difficult times, and I think that <laughs> this year has been incredibly strange and fulfilling and difficult for many of us. Um, but as James mentioned, and as we said, this, this group, even if we have been mostly virtual and only online, has, is a family to me. And I truly um, appreciate the opportunity to help move our vision of the amazing Salt Lake City that we all love and work for forward. So thank you all very much. And I do want to also point out that I have my own bobblehead. Thank you, James and council staff. I'm actually wearing 
the dress the bobblehead is <laughs> is modeled after. So, um, and you, you can't you can't have all of this without truly the amazing friendships, ties, communication, and care that everyone um, in this building feels for each other and, like I said, for this amazing city. So thank you all very much. Yeah, we're going to take a few, just a brief recess, but yeah. Thanks, everyone. Looks like we are just waiting on Dennis, but we have a quorum, so I am going to go ahead and get started. Uh, before I get started with the public hearings, I do want to just mention that today we also had the pleasure of having um, one of Salt Lake City's scout troops join us. Unfortunately, because of uh, the limited space, they're actually in the overflow room listening. And it is Troop 1262, so they have the video in there too, right? Yeah. So everyone wave at Troop 1262. Thank you for joining us, and hopefully you will come back soon. I would like to say that this troop is from um, all over Salt Lake City and from 60th South up. So they um, are a fun, eclectic group. If you saw them in the hallway, please, or see them in the hallway, say hello. Um, I always appreciate when we have young people being involved and learning about our government. So thank you, Troop 1262. With that, we're going to move on to our uh, public hearings. Oh wait, we don't have any. So we'll move on to potential action items. Um, the item C1 is a master plan amendment and rezone at 129 South, 700 East, and 758 East Bueno Avenue. I will look for a motion. Madam Chair. Um, Do you remember the I, oh, yes, thank you. Madam Chair, I move that the council adopt the ordinance subject to the property owner executing and recording in the office of the city, Salt Lake City, excuse me, in the office of the Salt Lake County Recorder, a restrictive covenant that prohibits the rental or lease of any units or rooms for periods less than 30 days. And two, the property owner shall make the best efforts to salvage building materials from the existing dwellings uh, for either reuse um, or to donate them. Um, and I have spoken, uh, I'll just let other council members know that we did sp speak with the um, property owners and they're um, had already planned on doing that, and they're um, very happy to do that. I further move that the council direct staff to draft a legislative intent in collaboration with the administration for review and consider adoption at a future council meeting. The purpose of the legislative intent would be include, or would include but not be limited to the following purposes. Considering a policy that would outline council expectations when considering discretionary zoning applications in order to protect existing affordable housing or replace it if it's demolished in order to facilitate new construction. Consider policies outlining steps the city could take to help preserve and expand housing stock when considering zoning amendments. Consider including in the review of the housing loss mitigation um, being conducted right now by the administration, a policy to help mitigate the impact to existing naturally occurring affordable housing, either through preservation or replacement of these units. I have a motion by Council Member Wharton. Is there a second? Second. I have a second by Council Member Ferris. Any discussion on this? Just want to speak really briefly to these issues. Um, um, that uh, we, of course, recognize, and we've been ta we talk a lot about naturally occurring affordable housing, and I think that um, there are that that and the discussions that we're that we're about to have in the coming year, we expect to have in the coming year about our housing loss mitigation ordinance and about other um, changes that are going to bring a lot of different housing types um, 
to um, different areas of the city uh, to help meet our ongoing need for housing. I think the, the, the reason why I felt like this was important to bring is to um, let not only directing staff in, in, here in City Hall, but letting the community know that, that these are issues that we are, are working on, um, putting the policies in place, that permanent ordinances in place, but during that time we're still going to continue to work on them um, through the means that are outlined in this motion. So I really appreciate the community um, members who have given us the feedback um, that we were able to take forward today to put these considerations in. And that was all um, part of uh, the, the public comments that we received at the last meeting and the information um, and comments that I've received from constituents and that that really did help make the difference here. And I think it's going to um, make a, a better policy moving forward for, all, for the city. Great. Thank you, Councilmember Wharton. Was there any other discussion on this? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. We will move to item. Thank you, everyone. We're going to move on to the next agenda item, People's House. Um, the next agenda item is C2. It's a rezone at Redwood Road and Indiana Avenue. I will look for a motion. Oh. Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Um, Can we, I'm going to actually take a brief recess right now. So council members, um, I would not like you to go outside right this moment, but we are going to take a brief recess. Before I get started with our meeting, I would like to um, address what happened in our hallway with public commenters who decided not to actually make a public comment, but have a protest in our hallway. And I want to point out that we, I believe in protests, I believe in people using their voices, I believe that it is a necessary and important part. Um, however, I also believe that much of that, all of that, should be done in the correct space, which is out front. This is not, I want to hear people's voices. I want to hear people's opinions. I pride myself on making sure that we create spaces where people feel comfortable enough to, to say how they feel. It is something that has been very important for me over this last year. So to create a space where it is disruptive to our meeting and intimidates people, both council members and others who may have wanted to be able to have their voices heard is simply inappropriate. We have rules of decorum for a reason, and again, I have, I have prided myself on trying to create space for everyone to feel heard. I hope that in the future we can continue to have that space where everyone is welcome, whether you we have the same ideas or thoughts or not. With that, we'll get back to our agenda. We are, I think, we were still waiting on the rezone at Redwood Road and Indiana Avenue. With that, I'll look for a motion. Madam Chair, I move the council adopt the ordinance. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Dugan and a second by Council Member Ferris. 
Uh, any discussion on this? All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, thank you. Sorry, I didn't Sorry. know what you were coming to. <laughs> Um, this, we're now turning to item C3. This is an ordinance allowing commercial uses on rooftops which exceed, eight, which exceed two stories. I'll look for a motion. Madam um, Chair, I move to approve the ordinance. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Wharton and a second by Council Member Dugan. Uh, any discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Uh, we are now on um, C4, the budget amendment number four for fiscal year 2021-2022. I will look for a motion. Madam Chair, I move that the council um, adopt an ordinance amending fiscal year 2020-2022, excuse me, 2021-2022 final budget for Salt Lake City, including the employment staffing document, only for items as shown on the motion sheet. Second. I've had some thought in my head that it was going to be much longer than that, but maybe <laughs> it's just because that we've had so many discussions on it. So I have a motion by Council Member Wharton and I believe a second by Council Member Dugan. Um, any discussion on this? Just note for the public, there are still a few items on, on budget amendment number four that will still be outstanding and we'll hope to address those at the January meeting. Um, but I believe with this, most of budget amendment number four is passed. Perfect, thank you. Um, with that, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Oh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, I meant to make one other statement, sorry. That's okay, okay. go ahead. Just that um, it's, um, I'm a big supporter of the, um, of the park ranger program, and I, I do hope, though, that we'll be able to, can, um, through this first budget amendment, see how that program goes and hopefully expand it as a way of having non-officer response to some of the issues that we're seeing, not only in parks, but at our trailheads. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great, council members, we are moving on to C5, which is an um, ordinance that would consider adopt 2020 Salt Lake City Street Lighting Master Plan. I will look for a motion. Madam Chair, I move that the council adopt the ordinance with the following qualifications. That the department continue to evaluate and implement location of wireless cell facilities on city light poles in coordination with the administration's view of the constraints and factors in the course of doing so, and that the department's statement of intent letter attached clarifying dark skies values as part of the master plan implementation to be included with the final adopted version of the plan. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Dugan and a second by Council Member Ferris. Any discussion on this? Council Member Wharton. Uh, I really do appreciate including that letter um, as part of the official, uh, as part of the report. Um, I hope that it will be more than just a statement of intent, but in, um, be read as part of the document to meet those dark sky goals. Um, and I know that this has been a long time coming. Um, and so I hope that this will be the beginning of us moving towards a lighting plan that is compliant with dark skies um, and not the end of that conversation. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Well, we're on to comments. Um, question, did I miss something? <laughs> okay. Um, are there any questions for the mayor? Mayor, thank you for being here with us. Council members, anything for Madam Mayor? Great. Well, there you go. And we are on to the general comment portion of our agenda. Um, Delaney Silman will be from our staff, will be handling our WebEx comments and for anyone who's commenting in person I believe we 
have Delaney helping with that as well. She'll be calling out those names. Um, when it is your turn to speak, Delaney will announce your name. She will, uh, if you're on WebEx, she will unmute your line and you may begin. For people in person, please step up to the podium. Feel free to remove your mask to make your comment in the microphone. Once you begin, please state your name and the two minute timer will start. At the two minute mark, the host will announce time and your microphone will be muted. If you are unable to finish your comment, please send the rest of your comment via email, mail, or calling our office. Our contact information is posted in the meeting room or in the WebEx chat. Um, if you are joining virtually and don't actually wish to speak, it's totally fine. Thank you for joining us. Please either message our staff or, or, and let them know, or just when the host states your name, let us know that you're just here to listen. Um, I would encourage everyone to c consider the rules of decorum that we talk about every single time we're in a council meeting. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, allow and create a space for people to actually give their comments to the city council. We do welcome everyone's comments and insights and ideas and thoughts. And we just ask that you do it in such a way that it's respectful both to us, our staff, the people that work in this building, and to each other. With that, I will turn the time over to Delaney for our first general comment. Thank you. Tonight we have five people here to speak and we will begin with Cindy Cromer, followed by Katie Van Sleen and Alex Powelson. And Cindy Cromer is there in person to speak. I, um, you all know that I'm frequently down Cindy, to the can I ask a favor? Yes. Do you feel comfortable putting your mask down? If not, I totally understand. We just need you to get a little closer. It's a little muffled and difficult to hear. I'll get closer. Is this working? That's better. Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, great. So all of you know that I'm down to the wire in terms of getting my comments in. Um, frequently, they're warm if I bring them in printed, and they're in your um, inbox during some other meeting. Um, I am very grateful that I had the foresight to thank um, council, former council member Johnston and former council member Rogers previously. I don't want to let anyone present think that they were omitted. Um, but I'm very grateful that I had the foresight to do that because I don't have time to thank any more people than I'm thanking already tonight. There are five of them and I have never thanked five people in two minutes. And I also have to move quickly because my glasses are going to fog up with my mask on. And that is a new thing that I have never had to deal with before. First of all, Dennis Ferris, I need to thank those of you who voted for um, Dennis and former council member James Rogers for selecting him. I know it was not your intent to relieve some of my stress about housing, but you did. I needed to know that someone who could walk the walk with respect to housing was assuming the responsibilities for District 2, and Dennis Ferris did that. Troy Baker. For 37 years, Troy Baker solved problems in parks and made other people look good. He could have made you look good and you didn't even know about his gift. Ellie Hardman is retiring after serving in the City Council Office, Parks, and Urban Forestry, plus the Salt Lake School District. Ellie can find information when other people put it in the wrong place. Russell Weeks. For me, Russell will always be the consummate Trib reporter covering the City Council. He made me realize that the same skill sets which make a great reporter also make a great employee in the City Council's office. And lastly, Joel Patterson in planning is simply the most versatile planner I've ever had the privilege of knowing in 40 years. If I say more about Joel, I will start to cry. There may That's be more time. than... What's that? That's time. Okay, thank you. You did a great thank job, you. though, getting to all five. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Sorry, Delaney, go ahead. Um, next, we're going to hear from Katie Van Fleen and Alex Owlson and Monica Hilding. And Katie is going to be speaking in person. I'm just waiting to see if, if anyone shows up. Is there a Katie, what's her name? I don't see anybody. I don't see anybody here, so she may have left. Delaney, we can move to the next person. Okay, thank if you. If she shows up, we'll, we'll make sure she's heard, but we can move on. Okay. All right, next will be Alex Powelson, followed by Monica Hilding, 
and then Dave Iltis. And Alex, you are now unmuted. Hi, yeah, I just wanna say that I support all the protesters who are there in opposition to these micro units. I think that having these micro units is like, I don't know, I don't support these units with no kitchen, no bathroom or shared spaces. And I think like basic human decency requires that people have their own bathroom and kitchen in their apartment unit. So that's all I have to say, thanks. All right, next we'll hear from Monica Hilding, followed by Dave Iltis. And Monica, you are unmuted. Um, hi. Um, I'm sorry the master plan and planning commission's negative recommendations um, have been ignored by this council. Um, taking out affordable units for this poorly designed co-housing instead of a cool infill project is tragic. So many opportunities to preserve historic homes and affordable housing have been lost. I urge you to preserve, to preserve the unique lake the city is named after and recognize the international importance of its wetlands to so many species of migratory birds. Preservation is important. That's it, thank you. Lastly, we will hear from Dave Iltis. And Dave, you are unmuted. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. OK, thank you. Um, so I wanted to make a couple comments. First, uh, regarding the street light plan, uh, thank you for including the letter of intent by public utilities. Um, it has been a four-year battle to get public utilities to recognize that dark skies are important. They have not wanted to do so and um, uh, seemingly refused to do anything more but put this in as an afterthought in the plan. Uh, switching gears to um, bicycling and transportation planning, um, 100 South uh, has revealed a number of problems with the city, one of which is what happens when a city department uh, breaks city code. Uh, there is little or no check and balance to that, um, and it is very hard as a citizen to figure out what in the world is supposed to happen at that point. Um, transportation is responsible for 31% of CO2 emissions, and the mayor dropped the ball completely on 100 South. Um, and they, there's still a chance to fix that, but unlikely that that will happen. And then lastly, in terms of organization within the city, uh, this comment's directed to the mayor and uh, the council as budget uh, stuff is that transportation and the streets division have been in constant battle for years regarding who's going to maintain and or paint bike lanes and other things on the streets and the two departments ought to be merged into one uh, and or put one under the other so that there is no infighting and so that uh, bike routes and other street facilities get maintained. Uh, it's just not okay anymore. Thank you. And that was our final comment. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who commented this evening. Um, <clears throat> new business. We have a resolution regarding the local emergency declaration extension. I will look for a motion. Mr. Dugan. Yes. Uh, before I make the motion, I was going to make it to the Friday before the of, uh, spring break but that's just a change to this page here from the 28th to the 25th but here's my motion i move the council adopt the resolution approving the extension of emergency declaration proclamation b of 2021 from the date of this resolution to until friday march 25th 2022 unless later extended and or terminated by subsequent resolutions of the council or unless terminated pursuant to state law 
Second. I have a motion by Council Member Dugan and a second by Council Member Wharton. Is there any discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. We do not have any um, unfinished business, so I will look at Section G, the consent portion of our agenda. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Wharton and a second by Council Member Ferris. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, uh, that passes unanimously. And council members, before we adjourn, I just um, do want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to be your chairperson over this last year. And um, I look forward to ringing in the new year. Happy holidays to everyone. Um, and I think with that, this council meeting is adjourned. Oh, yes, and I do before. Sorry, don't leave yet. Most importantly, as we've heard so many times today um, from different council members, I want to say a very, very, very warm thank you to council staff. Um, I truly, truly do not know how I would have gotten through this year. without them um, at every step they have learned how to read my mind and make me feel better and do everything for the seven of us that sit at this dais and I truly 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 cannot begin to thank you enough for everything that you do for us for how you keep this city together <laughs> Because believe me, I think it would fall apart without all of you. So thank you. Happy holidays. See you next year. Happy holidays.